Oh boy, I, there wasn't a job that I wouldn't take as a kid because I always wanted, I always had this ambition about having some money. What was the best part of hunting with your dad growing up? I was brought up in this little valley town in Sacramento Valley uh, in California. And uh, the town was about 5,000 people and he was a small town lawyer and uh, district attorney of the county and so uh, we went bird hunting once or twice but not much but it gave me the inspiration later on in life to become to aspire to hunting more than I did when I was a kid. What did you enjoy about it even back then that made you want to do it more? Well one of the reasons why he would go duck hunting with some of his male friends at an invitation and he would shoot ducks, wild ducks. I got the job of picking the ducks. I think he gave me 50 cents a bird to pick. It would take me nearly all day to pick a sack of ducks, but I really ended up loving to eat them. So that gave me the taste of this wild game. And I think to this day, I still enjoy sitting down to a, a wild duck in my plate. Uh, tell about what the Mexico trip entails. Well, I, every year now, the, seems to be the last 10 or so years, I take sons and son-in-laws on that trip. We go down to Mexico and shoot uh, doves. The doves are really a nuisance to the farmers down there, so we go down there and help the farmers. And so we sort of spend three or four days shooting doves uh, in the morning and the afternoon. Margaritas are available after that. And so, and the wonderful Mexican people that we see and meet, uh, most of them, they get some of the extra birds that we shoot, and so the town gets a whole uh, level of new proteins from the birds. Uh, name as many jobs as you can remember having when you were coming up. Oh boy, I, there wasn't a job that I wouldn't take as a kid, because I always, want, I always had this ambition about having some money, buy my own bike or whatever it might be at the time independence and such, because our family didn't have a lot. So money was spoken about a lot in the family, the lack thereof, because they all came out of the Depression years. But my jobs, uh, whether it was picking walnuts, sacking walnuts as a young kid, uh, having a chicken farm, I did that a couple of different years, and that was pretty interesting and informative. I did tractor driving. I did uh, work in the oil fields. I was... Uh, <laughs> Hardly anything I didn't do. I worked one summer, which was really interesting, when in Chicago I worked on, on the railroad. I was a switchman. Uh, I tried to get a job as a taxi cab driver, but you can think how funny it was. Uh, me showing up the first day being in Chicago and saying I'm applying for a job, but I didn't know where the airport was. So <laughs> you can imagine getting in my cab that day because we didn't have Google Maps and those kinds of things then. We just had, we had to know where the airport was. Well, I didn't know where anything was. So and, they said, no way, the so I got a job with the railroad. The railroad knew where they were going, so that was good. I was a switchman on the railroad. What was that like? Uh, that was great fun, uh, but uh, unfortunately I worked the graveyard shift, but I learned a lot about that. It showed up at midnight and worked at eight in the morning. Uh, we did a lot of heavy work for a couple hours and we did, um, we slept a lot in the caboose <laughs> in those last few hours. <laughs> Fe was, feather bedding, I think we called it. What was uh, driving a tractor on a sugar beet farm like? Oh, that was a great summer uh, doing that. It was a dollar an hour, no, pardon me, a dollar a day. Hard work. No, it was a dollar an hour, hard work. Get up, you have to start the engine on the, on the big tr uh, diesel engine, and that was really a always an issue and put it in the gear and so forth but uh, it was go one way down the field and the, the exhaust would be in your face and you go the other way in the field the wind would blow all the dust in your face so it was a, a, a pretty smoky day. And you were the only English speaker I was the only there, right? English speaking among uh, probably 30 or 40 uh, uh, Mexican uh, workers from, uh, from Mexico that would come up every year as uh, they were uh, annual workers. 